So I've been having Wi-Fi problems in the shed. The router is in that building there, and the shed is away over there. And the Wi-Fi really is quite weak. Uh, sometimes I can't even access my IP camera at all. So what I'm going to do is modify the router that we have in there. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to it to hopefully improve the signal. So this is what the signal is like just in here from the router that is out in the building there. Uh, and as you can see it's quite poor so I'm going to leave the phone exactly where it is just now and see what the signal goes to after the modification. So this is the router, it was the one that we got when we uh, had the sky put in. Uh, this was our second router and as you'd expect with it being from Sky, it uses obsolete hardware and is just crap. This is a new router that you now get with Sky and what I don't like about it is they don't put external antennas on it. I don't understand why manufacturers these days have such an aversion to putting antennas on their products. Uh, it just makes them a heck of a lot worse. Uh, and especially all these dumb phones you get nowadays, uh, for example, uh, this. I think they should all have an option with where you can have a detachable Wi-Fi antenna or a detachable 4G antenna. Because I've done an experiment before where I've, where I've plugged an antenna into a phone and the signal went from nothing to full. Because uh, the antennas that they put in stuff are just pathetic because the place looks over functionality and it's just wrong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this router uh, and drill two holes uh, roughly maybe there and there I'm going to attach external antennas onto it uh, and the antennas that I'm using just came off some IP cameras I've got lying around uh, I'm going to put these connections in. These are SMA to UFL, I think. Uh, I can't, I can't remember the exact type, but they're these uh, funny little sort of right angle connectors like that. And uh, that's the type of SMA connector I'm using. So we just need to open this up. Uh, there's one screw in the back which uh, holds it together. which none of my screwdrivers fit as you'd expect. Okay, so now it should open up easily enough. Should uh, kind of unclip, it's just held together uh, with a load of clips so you'll have to go around it with the screwdriver just to get it uh, opened up. Because uh, I'm kind of <laughs> struggling with it here. Yeah, so to get apart, you actually have to push in on on the clips in there, uh, which is a bit of a nightmare. I don't know why they couldn't have just held it together with screws like any normal manufacturer would. It's an absolute nightmare to get this apart. nearly there and watch out because there's a screw underneath there so you have to take off one of the rubber feet to get to that luckily I spotted that or else I um, would have broke the thing it's okay nothing's damaged so here is the unshielded power supply which just throws off interference and causes the signal to drop out occasionally. Uh, so if you get special copper tape that's insulated on one side you can't actually shield that. So uh, that's just how it should have been designed in the first place. Uh, that whole unit just pops out. Uh, hopefully the capacitor isn't still charged because I, I never I had this on not too long ago. On here there are uh, sort of 
little clip things which you've just got to push in with long those pliers so you can pull the board off. Uh, it's a bit of a hassle getting this one out because there's a ferrite cord transformer right next to it. Uh, and then you need to get that out and then the whole thing should lift out. So with that lifted out we can now uh, remove the main board. Uh, and to do so, there's a clip there which you push out towards the front and a clip just behind the power supply connector. Uh, so I'll just sort of do it like this. Try and get the power supply connector one as well. But uh, no doubt there will be other complications. It might be easier to lift it out from the back. Right, so I've got those clips uh, pushed out of the way, so the front of it should now just, the whole thing should now just lift out if we're careful about it. So what we have here is those crappy patch antennas which they insist on putting inside everything uh, and those are just no use at all uh, so what I'm going to do is just disconnect them I'll keep them in just in case I want to undo the mod for whatever reason and all I want to do is just unclip those two connections there uh, drill two holes in the back of the unit and insert the antenna connections Okay, so I've decided that I could put one antenna there and one in there, so the holes will be going about roughly there and there. Uh, and antennas will just stick up straight from the unit. And there's uh, the coaxial on these antennas, surprisingly, is quite thick. Uh, I think to get my antenna on, that patch antenna there is going to have to come off because it's in the way. Okay, so I've decided that I won't need to remove the patch antennas from the board. I will just leave those on, uh, just like that. So I've drilled two 6mm holes in the corners there. So hopefully these connectors will fit. Either I'll be able to screw them in because it's quite a tight fit or I can just gradually widen the holes. Okay, so... The holes have to be about 7.5 millimeters, so uh, I've now filed them out and the antenna sockets fit in rather nicely. So this is what it's going to eventually look like. So all I need to do is just unplug these ones from the board and then plug in the new connector. So that's just removed and I've just uh, tucked them back like that. So. I need to now get these connected, just trying to remember which way up this goes. So the antennas are at the top, connectors for them are at the bottom of the router, so there should be uh, plenty of cable space. Uh, and then all we do is just uh, clip them on. Routing the cable might have to be done in a certain way to get best signal performance because uh, in places these cables are actually clamped uh, to the boards using grounded metal clamps so I may need to maybe clamp them in places I'll just use uh, this, the clamp at the bottom there uh, and then our other antenna goes on here like this And just clamp those in like that. And that should hopefully do it. Uh, we should just be able to to route them up sort of this way inside this empty space here. Now 
There we go, that's pretty much it done. Just try and uh, route the cables carefully so they're not getting caught. And also don't forget about these uh, white pipes. They go in a very certain way. It's a nightmare to get this thing back together. Yeah, so basically you want the slot on the side of that to align with the circuit board and then you've got to fit the LEDs in because uh, they stick out a little bit and then that whole thing should hopefully just push down uh, into place. Hopefully I can do it without breaking anything. There we go. I think that's in. Buttons are working. Just got one other clip and there we go. That's it all together now. Now at this point, uh, ideally we would uh, make up some sort of shield for the power supply. Uh, but unfortunately I've not got the materials to do that, so uh, I can't really do it unfortunately, so uh, that just goes back in like that. Should just slot down straight vertically. If all goes to plan. There we go, that's the power supply uh, back in. So now all that's left to do is uh, put the thing back together and give it a test. So that's all back together again. Here's the antennas which came off uh, Foscam IP cameras. Uh, looks like we need to tighten up the connectors a bit more because they're spinning now. And there we go, there's the finished modification. Now I'll just have to give it a test and hopefully it should be much better. So from the point of view of the phone, the signal doesn't seem to have changed but uh, hopefully uh, in the shed it should be better. Well this thing here was one of those Sky wireless booster boxes that you get and I took that apart and put external antennas on it as well because it was also a piece of crap. And before the light on this was flashing sort of really, really slowly um, and the signal strength was sort of represented by how fast that light flashes. Uh, if the light's on continuously, the signal's very good. Um, and, but if it's like flashing very slowly, like even slower than this, then it's quite crap. So I think there's a small improvement out here anyway. But then the signal's got to travel uh, from over there to over here, which is uh, a fair distance. Well, from the point of view of the phone, there wasn't much improvement, but phones have crap antennas in them uh, anyway, but from the shed, this is um, a great improvement. Before, it would, the frame rate from the camera was uh, much worse than this, but uh, now it's uh, quite a bit better, so at least it has worked to a certain extent.